Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast, featuring dream accelerating inspiration. I'm Jeff Meyer, your host, author, entrepreneur, and coach. My goal with this podcast is to help you identify and clarify your own dream by taking wisdom from others' successes and challenges. If you're looking to take action on your dream, to make a difference doing something you love, but your fears are holding you back, then this podcast is for you. If you're interested in finding additional support, you can also check out my Dream Accelerator coaching program designed to help realize your full potential and reshape your future. As always, you can learn more about my Dream Accelerator program at jeffmeyer.org. Using my Dream Accelerating formula, heart-centered entrepreneurs can focus on their dream, name their fears, change their mindset, define their next, and move forward anyway. Hey, welcome back, fellow dreamers. We are so excited for another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast. And today I am uh, really excited to meet and to uh, talk to Tiffany today. Tiffany, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Uh, why don't you just take a moment, introduce yourself, your business, where you're joining us from, whatever else you want to describe about your family or, or anything else. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for having me on the show. Um, my name is Tiffany Higgins. I am a CPA. And I have five kids. We homeschool and we just moved to Houston in the last uh, like eight months ago. We've just arrived here. So getting settled in the Texas area. Um, I started a bookkeeping business back in 2015 and it completely transformed our family's life, becoming entrepreneurs and realizing that there is no ceiling to what you can make in your business and what you can do for your life. And since then, um, I decided to start sharing that with others. So now I also teach moms how to start their own bookkeeping business and, and become entrepreneurs, even if they've had no prior experience in accounting or bookkeeping or as a business owner before. Wow. So you're not, you're just not a bookkeeper. You, you have a bookkeeper academy. I mean, you are, you are training moms specifically. That's your niche. Mm -hmm. on how to do this for themselves. And you seriously, you can help someone that has no prior <laughs> experience be able to grow their own business in this in this area? Yep, absolutely. That's kind of our specialty is working with people that have never even heard of QuickBooks before um, and have no idea how to do bookkeeping. Wow. So, okay. Tell me the Genesis story of your dream. Um, to be a stay at home work, build a business and help other stay at home moms do the same thing in this area. Where did this start? Where did this spark come from? Yeah, I think the spark came from, you know, once I really had my first kid, honestly, um, I always wanted to have a cool career, like growing up being in high school and I wanted to go to a nice college and I wanted to have a really great career. That was something that was always important to me. But then when I had my first child, uh, I think I was just graduated college and it changed my perspective entirely, uh, mm. <laughs> which most people can relate to that. Once they have their first kid, they're like, yeah, their whole world is like flipped upside down as far as like priorities and even just perspective on, on the world. And so it really changed things for me. I, I still wanted a career, but I couldn't stomach being away from my son and not being able to totally excel at being a mom because that's that ended up being, you know, my true calling was really important to me. So uh, I struggled a lot when I had my first two kids staying home and not having money, being, you know, on a super tight budget or maybe not even having money at all for the things that we needed, let alone the things we wanted. So we sacrificed a lot. Um, but it wasn't until they got older and then I started to kind of get back into the career mode. They were in school, so I didn't have to, you know, miss out on a ton of stuff. Um, when it came to field trips and things like that, I still sometimes had to miss out on that. Didn't really feel good. Uh, but it wasn't a huge pain point until my third child was born. And she she's pretty far uh age difference. Like we have a big gap in our in our family. And when when that happened, 
all those same feelings just came back again, you know, like the, mm-hmm. the guilt of wanting to be home and be more involved as a parent. And uh, that is really what changed my life. I knew I didn't want to be broke again. I didn't want to raise my third child on one income and struggling, but I definitely didn't want her to be in daycare and somebody else raising her. So I finally realized I had another option and that's starting my own business and being able to have your cake and eat it too. do both. So how did you, how did you discover that other option? Well, you know, it kind of just like fell into my lap. I had been working for a very small public accounting firm doing accounting work. And I slowly started to take on more leadership roles there and getting acquainted with the actual work. And I saw how much he was billing and I saw how, how long it took me to do the work. And so I kind of had an idea of what that would be like if I did it for myself. So it was kind of always a long, like a longer term goal for me. I thought, you know, someday in the future, I'm going to have my own accounting practice. Um, But once I had my, my third child, it was like, why am I waiting? I can just do this now. So someday turned into today. Yes. (laughs) Very (laughs) unexpectedly. Okay. So take me to that moment. Take us to that moment when someday turned into today, your third child. And how did you reach the decision point to say, I'm in, I'm going for this? Yes. So yeah, it's kind of a funny story. I was, I had just finished getting my CPA license, which if you know much about that, it's kind of like passing the bar exam. Like there's a lot of study. Yeah. Super brutal. I had to go back to school. I had to study more every minute of every weekend I was spending studying for this test, passed all of my exams on the first try with great Mm. scores. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was was a a cool accomplishment. Um, A a lot of hours put in though, a lot of time kind of wasted on it. Um, But when I finished that first tax season as like officially a CPA, My boss gave me a $4,000 annual raise, which for me at that point, what I was making was kind of a joke. (laughs) So it was kind of like, I didn't have any reason to continue working for someone else because I realized that I would never really get to the level of income or live the lifestyle that I wanted for myself and my family if I work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the defining moment that kind of pushed me over over that hump even more. Talk to us a little bit about the family's decision in the, mm-hmm. the family's place in making helping you make that decision. How did you and your husband get to a place of alignment? Yeah, yeah, when I first brought the idea to him, uh, he was definitely worried, concerned about it because we would all of a sudden go down to just his income until mm-hmm. I could get the business off the ground. And But I I worked out the numbers and it just made sense. So I showed him what I was bringing home, um, even with the raise, what we were paying in in daycare and nanny costs and how how that net amount, how many clients I would really need to get that. I only needed like two or three clients to have that net amount. So that wouldn't even affect our budget at all. So uh, with that, he was like, you know, whatever you want to do, I'll support you. I'm lucky enough to have had a very supportive husband for that. Mm -hmm. Um, But he was definitely nervous, uh, apprehensive about it, full of fear, I would say. (laughs) Um, So was I, you know, I had no idea I'd never been a business owner before. I had no clue how it was going to work out. Um, But we just, we just went for it. So tell me, tell me some of those fears. Tell me specifically what were some of the reservations from him and from you to to jump into something that you didn't know. Yes. Only knew working for somebody else. You didn't know being your own boss. So that, that just strikes fear automatically because you're just not sure, but describe what you were feeling. Yeah. I think I was just feeling probably overwhelmed, like, and in no clear sense of direction. So when I started my business, I I had a a small plan, but I wasn't really sure what my next steps were going to be beyond that small plan. You know, get my LLC started, think of a business name, decide what services I'm going to offer. And beyond that, I had no idea how I was going to find clients. I had no idea 
what these clients were even going to need from me or how I was going to charge them. So all of that stuff was kind of in the unknown. You work it out. You figure out each step as it comes to you. Um, but my, my husband, he was worried about that too. Like, are there even clients out there? Is anyone even going to hire you to do something for them like this? <laughs> so doubt, doubt is a big, a big uh, player there, and especially with something you, you've never done before, right? Yep. Um, so how did you move forward anyway? You just said you went for it. Mm-hmm. What were some of the factors that made you take that fear along with you? Yeah, I just felt like even if something did go wrong, we could figure it out. You know, there's always the fallback of going back and getting a job. There's always that. So I think I kept that in the back of my mind, even though I knew that that was never going to happen, but it was a safety net. Um, And we just, we just learned, we just tried to learn as much stuff as we could, as we went, as we went along. And um, if we were scared about something or unsure, we just learned about it. So that way we wouldn't be afraid of the unknown. Yeah. So tell me some of the places you went to, to learn how to run a business. Yeah, I think networking, I did a lot of networking groups and just got around a lot of other business owners, which, you know, luckily for me, those were also potential clients for me as well, but just Mm -hmm. learning from them and learning how they were running their businesses and how they were marketing and things like that, that really helped me understand. I joined a lot of uh, Facebook groups that had um, people offering similar services to me as well and learned a lot from them. I got some advice from people that were, you know, two, three steps ahead of me. Yeah. So you started out with the idea of doing bookkeeping for other people. Mm -hmm. You didn't start out with the idea of the academy, did you? No. Okay. So this is one of those examples for my listeners of when you take the risk and step forward into the unknown, um, you get to experience a whole new vision and dream that emerges. And if you don't, you won't get to experience that. Mm -hmm. So um, that wasn't a part of your original plan. That door opened later. How many years later? Uh, Well, so 2015 is when I launched my bookkeeping business. And then in 2019 is when I thought of the idea to launch this academy. So four years. And that was pretty timely too, with uh, the pandemic hitting too, I'm sure. Yes, a lot of mothers wondering what they can do to stay home and to stay healthy, right? Work from home. Yep. And a lot of people that had already joined our program and launched their businesses prior to the pandemic, they were thriving throughout all of it too. So it was a blessing to be able to provide that opportunity for people. So has it, has your business completely switched over to the academy side or are you doing both still? Uh, It's completely switched over. I was able to sell my bookkeeping business and then I can focus directly on this now. Okay. So the the business that started in 2014 was called stay-at-home bookkeeping? It was actually called Cloud9 Accounting Services. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I focused on making sure all my clients were on Cloud9 with their bookkeeping. (laughs) I love it. I thought maybe it was after that uh, TV series that came out. Um, Anyway, Cloud9. And so you sold that business. I did. And you started a new business in 2019 Mm -hmm. called the Stay-at-Home Bookkeeper or Bookkeeping Academy. Yep. The Stay-at-Home Bookkeeper Academy. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you, you didn't only jump into a dream one time. You've jumped into another dream now that has shifted in your thinking. What? What prompted you to go all in on the academy side? Yeah, great question. So before I sold my bookkeeping business, I decided to um, hire another mom to come and work for me part-time. And she had an accounting degree, but had never had any experience doing bookkeeping or anything like that. She hadn't worked in that capacity yet. She had just had her degree. So I was like, this is going to be a perfect fit. I can show her around, show her the ropes. And she came to work one day and said that she needed more hours, but she didn't want to be away from her baby anymore, which I could totally relate to. So she told me that she was going to start her own bookkeeping business on the side as well as working for me part-time. 
And so I thought, you know, like there's plenty of clients to go around. I didn't worry about, you know, any competition or anything like that. But I thought she's in the perfect position because she's so new to accounting that she's not going to know a lot of these answers, but I'll be right here to help her if she gets stuck with any of her clients. And so it kind of got me thinking. And I, I was like, if I can help her, then I can help a lot of other moms do the same thing because bookkeeping is about 80% just data entry and 20% of it is higher level skills that you need to acquire, like learning how to code transactions, learning you know the IRS code and what financial statements are. But really the majority of the work is data entry as far as the time, the time that you put in. So it really helped me kind of come up with this idea. And I just created a program and I had about 25 people that decided they wanted to do this before I even created a single piece of content. Ooh, um, big, big point. I want to come back to this mm-hmm. before yep. you created a sync. You had 25 clients already before you even developed any content. Yep. Yep. I had, I'd been lucky enough to read some articles like on Teachable's website uh, that said you should do a pre-sale launch and get interested people committed before you even step forward. So I thought, what do I have to lose? I'm going to just do that first. And so I put some feelers out there. I, I grew a small Facebook group. I had like about 500 people in there that were all interested in working from home and potentially becoming bookkeepers. And so I told everyone, if I get 25 people to commit to this and and prepay, I will drop everything I'm doing. I will create this program and I'll support you as you grow your business. And so I think we made about $25,000 in the academy before I even created one video. And so, wow. So guys, so many of us wait to launch, wait to put our idea out there before. We wait until we got it clearly delineated, all mapped out. And what you're hearing here from Tiffany is sell before you create, sell before you launch. You're testing an idea and she is living proof that this can work. Um, So when you had the $25,000 and the 25 clients roll in, um, there had to be a moment, a gulp moment where you went, okay. (laughs) Oh yeah, there's been lots of those moments. <laughs> uh, but yeah, whenever I had that, I was like, "Oh man, now I really got to spend the next two weeks really making this awesome." And and here I am, like I don't even know how to edit videos. I don't have editing software, and so I just recorded videos. Uh, I think I was using maybe Screencastify. I don't know some kind of tool that I use to screen record, and I just made some videos, and I was like. I hollered at my sister, Hey, do you have any idea how to like edit these? Like I stuttered at the end, like cut this one out. And so she actually didn't know how to do it either. So I, she used her iPhone. She is like Apple iPhone. I mean, it was like the most basic, yeah. basic videos ever. And I, I read off of a script. I look silly, but it was exactly what they needed. And I had a, a girl in there. It only took her about three months and she ended up quitting her corporate job and going all in on on her bookkeeping business full time. So this is where I want to go. I talk to my clients a lot in the Dream Accelerator about um, remembering your who and your why will help you when you get stuck or demotivated. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me some stories. You just told me one that just energize you. You go like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this, that you're helping people. How how does your dream of this business, how is it actually helping people in their lives? Oh man, yeah, it's, it's totally changing lives because a lot of these moms come to me feeling totally trapped in their situation financially, but also at their job, feeling like they, they want more, but they don't feel appreciated. They don't, you know, from a, a personal touch, but also financially unappreciated. And then they they're missing out on their kids' lives. And fast forward, you know, three to six months later, when they launch these businesses, they get they get them off the ground and they have enough clients to to quit their jobs. Their whole life is different. Um, one student in particular, I just talked to her yesterday. She was able to 
grow her business while she was homeschooling. She has four kids at home. She was homeschooling them. She's, she grew her business and it, within like a year and a half, she paid off her husband's $200,000 chiropractor student loan. And now <laughs> that they've, they've done that, uh, her and her husband take turns working on different days so they can be home for their kids. And so he does chiropractic work in an office and then she does her bookkeeping business and they rotate days. And she said she figured it up last week that um, he works more than her but she makes more than him. So they're actually transitioning him out of work completely because it just makes more sense for them to both just do the bookkeeping business. Wow. So they're all in on the bookkeeping business together. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he even went to school for eight years and he's leaving it behind for this. So. Wow. So that's something to share too, is that there's such a higher, such an emphasis on higher education in our country. Um, there are other options, you guys. There are other options in your life than eight eight years of um, going to school. And I'm not not demeaning it, but you, you're not stuck if you're not going to school. There are ways that you can build. Do you work with Do you work with people other than mothers, stay at home moms? We, we have some dads in the group. We have grandparents in the group. We even have you know women that don't have kids. Uh, it's kind of like a full array of people, but the majority, I mean, we, we market towards moms just because I can speak that language. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, we, we get other people in as well. And they're just, they have just as much success. Actually, we have a dad named Matthew in there right now. He just landed a client uh, that paid him $7,500 for some back work because he was really behind in his bookkeeping. So, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So I'm going to geek out a little bit here, nerd out a little bit. So tell me what, what are you using to, uh, for your content, uh, distribution in your coursework? Yeah, I started out using the teachable program. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, a lot of coaches like to use Kajabi and, and other things, but I started with teachable and we've never had any reason to change. So we've just, mm-hmm. we've just kept it there. Uh, we also use ClickFunnels a lot for, for our marketing and for our students too. Um, we help them design their websites when they enroll in, in our program so they can launch their business without fumbling around and doing anything that's not necessary, uh, yeah. like spending days on a website design. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two main pieces of uh, things we use for, for delivering our content. How did you, how did you, uh, how do you do your videos today? Uh, today, really, I just usually do them on Zoom and record them and then upload them. Yeah. Wow. Super simple. Like, really, anything is simple. And I will tell you, I think about this a lot and I just, I never make it a priority, but a lot of my videos that are in our coursework now are some of my original ones that I made back in the day. And, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's pretty, it doesn't matter if it looks good. Like, I was literally reading off of a script because I had no skills on talking to people yet. And I wasn't comfortable in front of the camera at all. Um, and those videos still rock it. They're like, awesome. The students resonate with them and it gets the point across. So, you know, I, I totally can relate to the perfectionist, you know, mentality because that's kind of how I've always been too. And, um, but when you realize that you step away from that and you just take action, even if it's messy and not perfect, how much you can get out of that. It's kind of like, there's no point in wasting your time being perfect because you're just losing money at that point. Yeah, that's true. You, cause you might not sell any of it. So mm-hmm. it's yep. really good. Wow. That's very encouraging. So get out there, try your idea, produce that. I, we call it an MVP or minimally viable product and get it out there and see what it does with your audience. And Mm-hmm. Um, it's an ongoing testing. Yes. Right. Um, so you've been, you've been rolling now for coming on three years with the Academy. Uh, anything new on the horizon for you? Anything that's, uh, you seem to be an entrepreneur at heart, which if I would have probably talked to you in 2012, you would have probably said that you weren't. Yeah. I knew one day I wanted to have a business, but yeah, I'm a totally different person from what I was yeah. then. That's so you, cool about so there's growth, there's personal growth that comes oh, out of taking massive. this adventure. 
massive. That's probably my favorite thing about teaching these moms too, because they are stepping into new powerful versions of themselves that they didn't Mm. even know existed. And it is amazing to watch them be able to be the mom that they want to be, but be like just totally lit up in their life too. That's a thrill. Wow. Mm. I'm so excited for you. So anything new on the horizon, any, any new ideas that, that you can share? I mean, maybe you're keeping some of them to yourself. That's (laughs) fine, but Yeah, we do have some really cool things in store for this year. Some new partners that are coming on board that are just going to be totally epic for us and for our students. Um, But we're always trying to make it make it more fun and more graceful for our students to reach the results that they want. So we're always looking for new ways. Um, We've added some really cool new calls to our program. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of EFT. It's like emotional freedom technique helping people break past like mental money blocks and things like that, holding them back. So we've always got new things like that coming into the program that is, you know, super fun and exciting, but also helps you just like get to the next level version of yourself. That's wonderful. And that wasn't on your radar in 2019 either. No, Uh, absolutely not. (laughs) That's what happens. We we walk through a door and new doors open Mm -hmm. and you keep, you keep learning and you keep sharing what you're learning and adding value to your clients. How long is your program? We offer, if they um, want to enroll in the academy, we offer 12 full months of support in the academy, but they'll be ready to go and start marketing for clients within seven to 10 days. And then our, we're kind of all designed around, we're going to teach you the basics and how to talk the talk so you can start getting clients make money right away. So you have to step out into that imperfect zone and take action. And then once you get clients, we support them through the entire process so that they learn while they're getting paid, but they also know that they're doing an awesome job and developing great skills to become awesome bookkeepers in the future. Awesome. That's tremendous. Well, I'm very thankful to have met you and have this conversation today. Thank you so much. Is there anything you would like to say to my audience, those people that are sitting there with an idea, a dream of their own, that they've been sitting on for a while, they're stuck, they're struggling? What would you like to say to them? Yeah, I would just like to offer my help. If you ever want to brainstorm or you need that little nudge of like, hey, it's okay to just do this, you know, feel free to send me a message. But I really think that if you just take action, even though it's not perfect, then that's what gets you results. Yeah, wonderful. How can people get in touch with you if they want to be a part of the Academy or or have that conversation about their own dream with you? Yeah, yeah. You can, you're definitely uh, welcome to message me on Facebook. Um, Tiffany Higgins is my name. We also have a Facebook group that is really active. It's called Have Your Cake and Eat It Too. Um, ah, I noticed you said that earlier. Yes. That's yeah, good. Yeah. That's our motto. We really, we believe that you can have both. You can have your financial freedom and you can be the type of parent that you want to be. So, and then our website is stayathomebookkeeper.com. Awesome. The, um, and that's a click funnel site. It is. Yes. Awesome. Um, the Facebook group is a free group. It is a free group. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for being on the uh, podcast today. Absolutely. You have been an uh, inspiring example of the, our mantra move forward anyway. So yes. I am grateful that you did and that you are. And you're blessing a whole bunch of people because of it. And uh, the world's a better place because of what the risks you've taken. So kudos to you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank uh, you. And blessings on all your, your work. All right. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Hey, fellow dreamer. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, jeffmeyer.org for all of the show notes and links. And when you're ready to move from overthinking about your dream to actually taking action on it, consider joining the Dream Accelerator community. Our clients are getting crystal clear on their dream with our Dream Generator Vivid Description five-step process. They're discovering the truth about fear and how to use it as fuel 
to take courageous steps in the right direction. And most importantly, they are walking a clear path forward because they have made an investment in themselves to confidently realize their dreams. The results are so inspiring. Having coaching and companions on the dream journey is crucial. Remember, fear will come, fear will stay. Move forward anyway.